welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Has discusses. We got the motherfucking young Toki Man in the cut, and he's a Pike Game yeah, rapper, and he he's doing some saucy stuff with this the cash and Jake O H M, who is now a member. Isn't he a member of Schema Posse now? Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Shout out to Jay. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. But now I gotta ask you. You sent me that Joey Diaz link. That shit was so cool. How'd you find uh, Joey Diaz? How'd you get into him? Oh, I've been fucking watching Joe Rogan for like a long time now. I've been watching Joe Rogan. Well, I've known about Joe Rogan since I was like a little kid for watching UFC and stuff. But I don't know. Joe Rogan's fucking hilarious. So is just all of his friends, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, uh, you fuck with Duncan Trussell or any of them? Yeah, he's fucking. He's hilarious. Have you seen the uh, Midnight Gospel TV show? Yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, that show's a trip. That shit's genius. Like, he made it an animated podcast, man. Yeah, genius. Cool. Genius. So, you know what's cool though? I didn't really get that. What'd you say? I didn't really get that until watching it halfway in because I'm fucking. I'm done. <laughs> well, it's all good because, like, I didn't really like. Um, how do I say this? I didn't. I listened to his podcast, but and you know, when you, if you go on the Wikipedia of the show, you can actually dive into which episodes are adapted. So he pulls, you know, real scripted audio from mm-hmm. the studio, and it's done by Pem, um, Pendleton Ward, who did the uh, Adventure Time show, the Animation Crew. It's all the same Animation Crew's Adventure Time. So he, you know, he has scripted audio in it, but he also um, pulled a lot of the audio from actual real podcasts. So the end episode with his mother is actually his mother's voice at the end of the show. That's really dope, man. And, and his mother like passed away and stuff like that. So that's all the whole like Uh-oh. be here now type of stuff, which is like the ending's so fucking good. Like the the be here now type of shit. Really, like, yeah. uh, motivation. I mean, with that whole Joe Rogan circle, would you would you consider that to be, like, um, not just funny, but really, like, motivational at times? Like, looking Yeah, good? sometimes, to be honest. They're, yeah, they're really funny. My, my favorite, to be honest, is Theo Vaughn. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, they're doing a new episode, right? Yeah. Yeah, they can't, I think it was yesterday or something. You said it, <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, it was bro. hell funny. Uh, my favorite is when it. he's talking about, like, uh, uh, he's on a he was on a plane and he was like there was turbulence and he was like if there's if there's any if anybody uh if we have to like crash down on an island um I'm, I'm gonna eat the this like a uh, Vietnamese fella or some shit like a skinny fella like he was just thinking about it. he was talking with him about who he would eat first on if he, if the plane crashed <laughs> or some shit like uh, I mean skinny fella first uh, skinny fella his, his voice in general was so hilarious yeah it's just so like um. I don't know, it's so, like, 70s, you know what I mean? Like, like watching, like, an old, like, 70s comedy or some shit with, like, that one weird... He just yeah. reminds me of that weird... It, like, reminds me of, like, the people from, like, Waterboy. You know what I'm saying? That The, the Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Motherfuckers from the Bayou. <laughs> even, yeah, even though he's from Missouri, it still, he still reminds me of that wacky Bayou, motherfuckers. But nah, <laughs> like like let's get into uh, you know you know Pike Gang. I, I've explained on uh, the other episodes of the podcast how you how you got into Pike Gang, but I want to hear from you. How did you link up with Pike Gang, and how did you start working with them on music? Well, one day I was just to be honest, I don't really know how I found this. I was just scrolling on Twitter one day, and I saw a post about some uh, G Five Nine. Uh, Snapchat group or something, and so I joined about I joined that, and like a couple months into that, I think I was already making music by the time I joined that, and when I joined that, like a couple months in, like I started talking with Cash, and I, that asked the first thing I remember talking to him about was uh, what was it? It was fucking Subway cookies. Mmm, <laughs> they're tasty. Yeah, talking about how good the uh, the strawberry shortcake ones or whatever they were. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, I joined about I think 
February ish, March ish, twenty eighteen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just. Who else was in the chat? They could use it with them, huh? Who else was in the group chat? Um, oh, let me think about that. I know Jake was in it, but I didn't talk to him for the longest time. I didn't know who he was really. Um, Rose, you know, you know Rose. What is? Uh, did he have a different name or something like that? Winstrom. Yes. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. Yeah, he was in it, and. Uh, Gemini. Oh, yeah. He's no, he's a good person to talk to. I have him on Snap. He always swipes up if I'm producing something. He's a, he's a, like, he, me and him always, every now and then, like, every once every month or some shit, I'll hit him. We'll, we'll have, like, a conversation. He, I, 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 he was on my Snapchat and I didn't realize, like, how all the bangers that he produced by, like, Cash, like, to leave me alone and all the other ones. Like, he's, like, really, he's been doing this shit for a while. I fuck with him. Yeah, dude. He's been on it. And, uh, I believe. Damn, I don't, I, I don't know for sure, but I think Vibe Malls was on there too. Yeah, I don't know what he's been doing lately. I hope he's alright, but I've been hearing a bunch of different stuff. Thank you. Was on there too. Uh, so that's that was all the original people. I'm pretty sure. So how, like, how did you get into like underground music in the first place? Like, what was the first? underground artists that you fuck with with this sound? Probably uh, either Denzel Curry or Puya. Either one of those two. Because I'm pretty sure <laughs> I found uh, I first heard of Denzel Curry from uh, when he was on the Double XL Freshman. <laughs> yeah. And honestly I didn't know like what that's like what the underground uh, scene was back then. Or like what any of that like any of this like what SoundCloud or like any of that shit I didn't know what any of that shit was but I just like I heard of him and I was like dude this guy can fucking spit because like I used to be like really like in a Tech Nine like like Chopper fucking type of shit Chopper <laughs> like, yeah bro I was just talking yeah. to my friend about Chopper shit yeah <laughs> and fucking I was like dude this guy can fucking spit I was like I like this I like how this guy fucking spits he's fucking raw and then. Fuck, there's like this YouTube channel I used to watch that was like Fuck I forgot what it was called, but it was they make like videos of like like rappers like first songs compared to them now and it was like I don't know, I used to watch that, but I found uh, that's how I found Puya. Mm. And I found Puya and I was like, dude, this guy's this guy's pretty raw. And then <laughs> uh this is like so cliche or whatever, but the, the people that really made me want to like make music when I first found them is fucking Suicide Boys. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But. Like, the way I view them is like, you know, they're good, but they're really the tip of the iceberg. But they're they're fantastic, and there's a reason, you know, but they're really the tip of the iceberg, you know what I mean? It's like after... Yeah. I think, like, Ethelwolf kind of did that style before them and the shit that they did. Like, Ethelwolf did Ghost Mane and, like, all of their styles like way like a, a couple years before and like um but they're still really fucking good like we can't deny like they're they're so like i love the way they're mixing like in terms of the way they mix their vocals like a lot of the earlier artists in the funk scene their vocals were just so mixed poorly because of like they had no budget and they just they, they like had um they weren't getting any money off of it but like i can tell that like the suicide boys like they're just mixing is it's inspiring to me when i mix my vocals like um yeah, I fuck with bro, them. Not gonna lie, bro. I don't know how to fucking mix at all. It's good though because you're always on B. Like you don't, you don't. I don't think I really heard a song where I've heard you like fuck up on the like. The mixing is a bit low every now and then in your in your songs, but like every but like you you really like make up for it because you 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 always find something clever to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, shout out fucking Jake for. Making my shit sound fucking good. <laughs> yeah, he's oh yeah, he like he's a fucking he's on a different level, but like he's just like you know he's what I respect fucking... about him. I don't know if he's maybe changed his mind on this one, but as far as I know, he's never sold a drum kit, and I respect that. 
I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, he's never sold a drum kit, so, like, he doesn't want people to, like, take his sound and shit like that. Like, that's why I fuck with him. Oh, I'm sure about that. He's He's got his own fucking... He got his own, what to call, Detroit funk going on. Yeah. That's why, like, I want to hear him do it's some it's shit with... The style. No, 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 style. Yeah. Michigan. <laughs> Michigan, yeah. And that's why I want to see him do some shit with Mr. Cisco. I don't know if he's already done that. But him and Mr. Cisco would do something crazy. Because Mr. Cisco, is, you know, he's from Detroit, too. Um, and he, even though he, you know, he kind of pioneered a lot of the sounds in modern funk... He has been recently incorporating like Detroit stuff with that as well, but it's leaned way more to Detroit than Memphis. But I fuck with what Mr. Cisco does, and those like lasery sounding basses in that shit is so fucking cool to me. You know what I mean? Like that oil, oil, oil in the fucking 808s and shit. Yeah, I know you're. I know you mean the spaced out sound. Yeah, bro. But um, shit's hard. Yeah. So. What's the next tape that you got that you'll be working on? You isn't it a collaboration tape or like what's that? What's next? Nah, I'm working on my album right now, which is titled uh, Requiem, and it's gonna have like eight or nine songs, maybe ten, and that should be coming out around December. Who's gonna be uh, so. the producers on that one? Mostly Gemini, and I got a couple songs produced by Jake on there. Yeah, that's crazy because like like Cash did that for his last project. It was basically just Gemini and Jake. Cause like that's why I mess with like every everybody's individual projects because like the production is like always fucking you know on point in that shit. But um, will there be any features on this uh, project? Yes, sir. They will. Um, I believe Cash is gonna be on there. Um, who else? The one of the new members of Pike Gang, uh, OG Alpha Goose, is gonna be on there. Oh, I'm excited to you hear. Heard. I'm excited to hear that. I haven't. I don't think I've ever heard his song music anymore. How'd y'all scoop him up? He's his music's really fucking good. He's got like a like a. Uh, like a psychedelic funk type mm. of thing going. It's really good. And uh, do you know who uh, Astral Trap is? That sounds familiar, but no. Or, uh, God, I, I don't want to fuck up his name. Dari, uh, never mind. I don't know. I don't want to fuck up his name, but uh, a man named Astral Trap is going to be on there. He's, he's pretty, he's pretty hard. I look into that. He's got a, he's got a song with uh, Space Ghost Pert. Oh, you know I'm looking into that. I'm obsessed with Space Ghost Pert. I know you. <laughs> yeah, now you now now you're gonna get me to fucking oh my dude. <laughs> I am obsessed with him. You know what I've been listening to recently, which is an underrated tape, is Black Man's Wealth. Um, the third it was the one it was one of the like it was released in 2012, 2013, well later that 2012. Super familiar. What does the cover look like? It's it's purple. I know that's not really a good hint because a lot of it's coming <laughs> up. But it's like it's like got a car on it and strippers and like it's uh it's got like a silver outlining and it's like it's more like dark purple, not like light purple. But it's so like it's probably one of the darkest projects and like the way that his samples are chopped or like how do I say this? It's very like it's like stripper it's like stripper music. Like all the songs are like the hooks are so like um I'm finna get your pussy wet wet you gon' like it. Finna <laughs> yeah. get your pussy wet wet you gon' like it. Fin like it's like so like it's it's probably his like raunchy most raunchiest album and that's saying a lot when um you know, he has songs called like Sucka Dick two thousand twelve you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? What I love about him, you know, why I, what the appeal to, for me to him, and I think you'll agree on me this, is he, he's the exact opposite of Lil B, but in a in a in a good way. You know what I mean? Where he's always saying negative stuff online. He always is inspiring people to hate each other about some random bullshit, and he just always says some like offensive shit, 
Where like Lil B is like <laughs> the complete opposite where he's always saying positive so so um the same reason I flock to Lil B, like when I'm looking at Lil B, I'm listening to his lectures, is like I'm trying to get inspired, I'm listening to Six Kiss to get inspired, but for the same reason I listen to Space Ghost Purpose, I'm getting like angry and ready to fucking like make some fuck like yeah. I'm working out and shit. Like nobody listens to Lil B when they're working out. They listen to Lil B when they want to think about like introspective fucking based rap. You know, right? I get lit to wonton soup though. I uh, yeah, I give you that one because like a lot of his orders, like I mean, ski 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 fucking yo, like that's I get. He does have his hard song. He does have his hard songs, but Space Goes Perp. His harder songs just hit way more different. Actually, if you go on his Spotify, I don't. What streaming service do you use per for personal use? I use Spotify. Yeah, so if you go on that. He's got a really good song with Nell called No Trouble. And it's one of the most fastest songs. And I can tell people like, um, you know, Kodak and a lot of people have to use this sort of flow. Even like uh, on this song, it's called No Trouble. That's like a really fast gym song. I might play it on here just because. Actually, no, I got my headphones in. I can't do that. I would recommend listening to No Trouble, Rep FLA, Whole Lot of Ice, and Come and Get You Some. And I think one that you will probably flock to the most is the last track, which is called King of Diamonds. It's got Young Simi, Do2X, and uh, Xavier Wolf and Chris Travis, and it's an eight-minute song. And that's the oh, last damn. track. So I think you would probably... Like, it's one of those, like, underground posse cuts. Like, do you have any, like, underground posse cuts that you know of that are just fantastic that you could think of off the top of your head, or would you really have to dig to... Mm. I can't think of the name of it, but I really like the uh fuck, it's one of the it's off of one of this uh the EP the schema posse released last year for Halloween. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the ones where fucking I think that's the first time I ever heard Sempre. He fucking went the fuck off. Oh my god, which one are you talking about? Is it too cold? No, he wasn't on that. No, he wasn't on that. Um but I know you're talking about Hollow's Eve. Um, so there is a uh, the offering. No, there's keep it evil. I don't know. I could. I'd have to play it. Posse song part four is the last one on it. Or you just don't know the name. I don't know the name to be honest with you. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, but nah, dude, that shit was a. Uh, that shit was different. Those the Jay Green really knows how to like find talented i mean he's got jake Ohm on his crew now so we know that he likes talent you know what i'm saying like he he knows yeah. where to look for like newer underground artists because like and that's what a lot of the older like heads and the that started off in the early funk scene i respect them a lot because i don't do you know who adam the shinobi is adam shinobi that sounds familiar no but he's he, he's gotten a good amount of press in this funk shit and he's gotten hella streams he is like he he got like um he opened for Chris Travis, and I've interviewed him twice. So, like, that's crazy to me that he would be opening for Chris Travis and shit like that. And Eddie Baker is, like, still fucks with a lot of people, like, in the underground. Like, he's always commenting on, like, Mr. Cisco's shit. Like, I love to see... I'm saying I love to see old heads fucking fuck with us, like, new heads that are in this shit. Yeah, because yeah. they used to be them, you know? Yeah. And that's why I can just tell, like... There's certain people that are connected, like, to, like, where they come from. And there's certain people that aren't connected to where they come from. Like, I've never seen, like, Scrim or any of them, like, comment on, like, uh, fucking, like, mm -mm. like anybody that they used to do. Like, I don't see, like, Scrim commenting on, like, Bones as shit. You know what I mean? Hell no. No. When really, like, if he didn't, do, if they didn't do a song with Bones, bro, for their first fucking project, that's, like... Lit I always think to myself, I'm like, bro, they should do a song together. And I'm like... They did. That's on their <laughs> yeah. It's on their first project. First, kill yourselves. That shit's um. That's just fire though. They're they're earlier kill like I say like, a lot of their best work would be on the kill yourself projects. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Like, yeah. I don't the know. Earlier what do you say? Fire as fuck. Yeah. The earlier one fire as fuck. And uh, the Black Smurf projects. Those are really underrated. The the projects that they did with Black Smurf. Yeah, those are really good. I like those a lot. Like Brooklyn's a favorite track on on a 
I forget which one, but that shit's fantastic. Um, let's talk sure. about let's talk about some more personal stuff. Like when you were growing up, what like extracurriculars would you involve yourself with? Like uh, in you know in school or like camps or just like activities that you did as a hobby as a kid. That like, what what type of shit did you do as a kid? Extracurricular wise. Um, to be honest with you, dude, not too much, really. And <laughs> I just went to school and went home and just fucking just fucked off. I don't know. <laughs> game? Were you a gamer as a kid, or are you still a gamer? Yeah, I play a lot of I play a lot of video games. What what uh PlayStation? What what uh system did you have as a kid? When I was a kid, I had an original Xbox. And then, like, a 360, now I got a PS4. So which Black Ops were you a fan of the most? I don't know if you played that. My favorite is Black Ops 2. Yeah. I fuck with that one. Black Ops 2 is good. <laughs> that's got, for, for me, that's got the best zombies. But for me, the best multiplayer has to be uh, Black Ops 3, in my opinion. Black Ops 3 multiplayer is pretty fun. So I'm, I would rank it, like, campaign. The best campaign is the first Black Ops best zombies is the second black ops and the best multiplayer is the third black ops i don't know do you agree with that at all or not well i don't agree with the uh, uh multiplayer i think the multiplayer for black ops 2 is pretty fire too but, but i do like the multiplayer for black ops 3 it's really fun yeah the story mode was like i don't even i can't even i'm not even gonna comment me, on that like me either i don't even know what's going on with that <laughs> like they just saw like a random like sci-fi movie and it was like oh okay let's like yeah I, I mean you know it, it, I think what we what, what the world needs I don't know if you're a fan of like Blade Runner but the world needs like a really well done Blade Runner game do you know what that is I've I've heard of it is that like the uh oh wait no never mind I'm thinking of Highlander let me explain it to you. Let me. You're gonna fuck with it. You're gonna fuck with it. So it's a. It was a Harrison Ford movie from the '80s, and it's a sci-fi film. Harrison Ford is a. Um, let me pull up the fucking Wikipedia so I don't fuck this up. Um, but basically, Harrison Ford is like a. He hunts replicants. Replicants are like essentially clones of humans that are slaves, and they're like meant to you be used for labor on the outer planets on the solar system and shit like that um on the off world yeah. on the off world thing so basically what he has to do is he hunts down replicants that go rogue and don't do what their assignment are and he falls in love with one of the replicants that he's a, you know supposed to hunt and kill and he's trying to save her from like other replicants that want to like start some like revolution type of shit and it's fucking emotional man like that's that's like um I love like artificial intelligence type of movies. Like, what sci-fi flicks do you fuck with? In general. Sci-fi. Hmm. I don't really know, man. Like, probably. Shit. I like Star Wars a lot. <laughs> nah, I mean, yeah, bro. But I fuck with Star Wars. So, like, what, what do you like the prequels or the uh, see the main trilogy um I like the uh, uh the prequel cause uh I like grew up watching them you know yeah but I like uh what's it called the the video games a lot more like what Force Unleashed um, uh, the Force Unleashed, that's a good one, too. Um, what's it called? Why can't I think of it? Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, you ever played that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. That shit's fire. Yeah. The comics Both for that, those. too. The comic books for that shit, too, were so much fun to read. I was obsessed with them. I wish I read those, bro. Fucking Revan's probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, bro, he's like one of the like, best characters in this like shit. Part. They have to do a Revan movie, I'm telling you. Well, they have to. Like, picture Keanu Reeves yeah. as Revan. Or some shit like that'd that. That'd be dope. 
They're so sick. They're gonna they're remaking that game. Shit. For like PS5. That's gonna be dope. Yeah. That's gonna be dope. I, don't, I can't really think of any like sci fi movies. Alright, so what what's the best what's your favorite uh scene from uh, pulp fiction? Or segment of it? Because it's got a lot of segments, you know what I mean? Like moment. Yeah, probably um shit. Either probably the part where they accidentally blow that dude's head off in the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's just you, I don't know, you just don't expect it. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Or uh or oh, the part where she fucking accidentally uh, sniffs heroin and fucking, like, ODs and shit, and he has to take her to his friend's house. Is, I don't know, it's just so fucking chaotic and shit. That's what I love about, like, that part of it is because you could tell that was a moment for those two. And that, you know, it's I honestly felt really sad when he died because I feel like, you know, I don't know, in my life I've been with, like, a lot of, like, like, uh... Like women that I shouldn't have been with because of like you know other scenarios out of my control, you know what I mean? And that's why I fuck with that like small little dynamic of bringing the mob boss's wife out. You know, yeah. like, I just love that shit because like it's it's probably the most relatable aspect of the movie, and that's saying a lot because there already is a lot of relatable aspects of the film. You know, the whole like uh, like I don't know, man. Like he, the the way that they talk to each other is so relatable. You know. But the characters themselves are like so serious in a way that's not displayed, and uh, they they humanize such a serious form of that care of that character that we we know hitmen to be all serious and quiet, but we're talking we're hearing them talk about foot jobs, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what makes it brilliant, you know? Yeah, Quentin Tarantino is a fucking is a genius. And what I love is how much he influences a lot of like underground music in in an aspect, and and uh, it, it's fun to see like films impact a lot of like you know rap. I mean, even if you look at the what Logic has done, I'm not the biggest Logic fan, but that's really interesting what he's done with the the um, Bobby Tarantino shit. I think it's cool, you know. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. He had, like fucking Rick and Morty on it or some shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, I'm I'm all I love that shit. Crazy. But it's also it's good for Soldier Boy, man. Like I'd love to see him like sort of clap back, you know, from that shit. So he he just kind of had a comeback by saying he had a comeback. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like if you really think yeah. about it, because like nobody gave a fuck about him until he went on the Breakfast Club again, and that shit was so funny. So he just like um I fuck with Soldier Boy, bro. But the thing about like um Soldier Boy fucking funny. <laughs> The thing about Soldier Boy is that even though like he did all that shit first, Lil B did it better, bro. Let's build back to Lil B. Like Lil B is just a better version of Soldier Boy. Like I fuck with Sol like Lil B so much. Like I just fuck with him so much. Did you listen to his new mixtape at all or no? Nah? No, oh, dude. Isn't it like five hours? Bro, I I'm not I don't know. <laughs> do you not have the do you not have the patience for that? <laughs> I mean, bro. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I mean, I bet it's fire. I bet it's fire. Not gonna lie, but holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But um, what how many is, tracks is on it? You know, uh, just like around eighty or ninety or something. God damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? I just loosely say no, nah, but it's it's whatever though. It's fucking. It's, 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 it's I fuck. Some of the tracks are, you know what I mean. But I think he's a really skilled producer. I think, um, you, I think it would be cool to hear like people rap on his beats besides him. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, but it would. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe, me. I'll talk to him. I've talked to him before, but I don't. Really, he's not that responsive to me. But it's whatever. He's fucking. He's got his own shit going on. But nah, how'd you get your name though? I want. I want to nail that down because that's some shit I overlook in my interviews. How artists get their name. I want to know how you got your name. At first, I was rapping under uh, Lil Toke, but I don't know. Like, a year into that, I was like, dude, this kind of sounds like, I don't know. It sounds kind of, I don't know. I didn't like it. So, like, I don't know. I was like, just, uh oh. What happened there? You're all good. 
Oh. oh, I don't, I don't know. I was just, I just wasn't feeling it. I remember I was at the library at school, like just sitting there writing, like writing raps down in my notebooks. And I was like, I don't know, just young toke. I, I remember I wanted to keep the toke. Yeah. Like I didn't know, I remember I had to keep something in front of it for some reason. But I just remember I was just like, hmm, young. And I just put toke main. I don't know. I don't know why I put the main. It was just, just because I don't know. Everyone just had that for some reason. It was just, yeah. Put the main. Toke, toke main. main. I was, it's, really <laughs> yeah. it's fire though. It's fire though. But I want to, like, when did you start writing songs? Like, what was the first time you ever sat down and wrote a song or freestyle? How, like, how old and when did you do it and why? Um, I was like, I started recording. I was like, three four years ago i don't know about this like same time like it was uh, i think it was not even a year before i like when i was rapping when i joined pi game yeah and like before that i used to like mess around and try to write raps and stuff but like i never like i don't know just try to actually like make a song and like yeah. Try to put it out there and do anything like that, you know? Yeah, for you. But, like, I was probably, like, 15. Yeah. yeah. Were any of your friends doing it? Um, My homie, uh, his name is uh, Black PKP. He Oh, yeah, he you do a lot songs. of songs with him. Yeah, I fuck with those songs. They're pretty good. Yeah, he's he's a really good rapper too. What album that you uh, fuck with just never gets old to you? Not gonna lie, probably paid programming one. Mmm, yes. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Taylor Thomas riding in a Hummer. Like bitches like me, I don't fucking stuck. I forget what he said. Yeah, but that shit, that shit fucking slaps. And rotating bed too. Oh my god, that vaporwave fucking that shit. Mmm. Yeah. Like, I get the same feeling when I listen to that. My favorite one's probably that. What'd you say? I'll say my favorite one's probably, uh... Damn, what's it called? Uh... I think it's the... Not the... Not Weatherman. That's a different song. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Google. What you were saying, I forgot. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of vaporwave shit on it, but like a lot of uh, song, like um, Lil Peep used the cut instrumental on his first mixtape, one of his first mixtapes, and uh, I really enjoyed that, but the the original cut, and um, I get the same feeling when I listen to that is when I listen to Unknown uh, Death 2002, it or Unknown, yeah, that's what it's called, and I fucking love that Young Lean tape. I fucking love early Young Lee. I still y'all. I love new Young Lee. He's never stopped fucking dropping masterpieces. Like he's a genius, man. I'm saying Young Lee's a genius. So I don't know if you agree or not. Yeah, Young Lee's fucking dope. Yeah, bro. What Young Lee songs do you fuck with? My favorite is probably Oreo Milkshake. <laughs> yes, that shit's and, a classic. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, that, was, that one's my favorite, but it's something off of his uh his his um his, new, his newest album, yeah. Stars. Yeah, I feel you. Um, the whole album feel fire. Yeah, my agenda like the intro that shit's fire. Pikachu's good. I fuck with Pikachu. That song's fire. And yeah, uh, Pikachu. He's got some new shit with Wolfsome that was really good. The Summer Rain joint. But um, his. His music videos are so fucking cool too. Yeah, inspiring, bro. The Hurt music video is my, probably my favorite. Shorty, I'ma do things that you ain't ever did. Finna wake up next to you <laughs> in my crib. Yeah, that's just fine. Yeah. But um, before we wrap this up, is there any anybody that you like to shout out or anything you'd like to announce about your music before we wrap this interview up? I like to shout out. Cash and Najir Koichi for having me in Pike Gang. I don't know where the fuck I'd be if I they didn't hit me up and put me in their group right here. 
Yeah. And uh, shout out to Jake OHM for letting me use his beats and making my shit fucking fire because he's like my big brother. Yeah. And shit. Shout out to him. So <laughs> shout out to fucking Jim and I for doing the same thing. He's a fucking goat. Shout out to Winstrom. You should interview. You should get a hold of him. You should interview him. He's a fucking. I will. Don't worry. I'll, I'll look into him. He's. I will. He's bro. fire. Um. Shout out everyone at Pike King. Uh, Genius, OG Alpha Goose. I think those are the only other people. <laughs> yeah. But my homie, uh, Black PKP. Yeah, shout out to him. I just listened to the new one of your new songs that you did with him. It was pretty good. And thank you for coming on on the show. Thanks you for coming on this latest thank episode you, bro. of Past Discusses. It was a blessing. We got into some good, you know, topics and you know, inspirations and all. all, all we talked about Bone Suicide, but all the good, all the good topics, all the good fucking shit. And thank you for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. And link in the description to go check out your music and check out Pike Gang as well and Instagrams and all that. Oh yeah. And thanks for coming on. Peace.